Dan Perry here again, and this is part five of our TCPIP basic series. It's an introduction to IP. Now, first we're going to identify what TCPIP is, and then understand the basics of what IP does. Um, TCPIP stands for Transport Control Protocol Internet Protocol. And it's a group of protocols or rules. Protocols essentially are the rules that are used to communicate so that every device understands what's going on. Um, protocols not related to computers could be something like, uh, we agree that we are going to talk in English. Um, if I'm speaking in English and you're speaking in French, we're going to have a problem because I don't understand French and you may or may not understand English. <clears throat> so the protocols are essentially agreeing on how the rules that we're going to use. Now, the TCPIP set of protocols is, um, is a suite or called a suite of protocols because there are well over a hundred protocols that are part of it. Very few of those are used by most people. Um, we use a number of those protocols actually without even knowing it. It's transparent to us using it. When we go to a website and a web browser, we're using several of those protocols, but we don't think about that. Often it's called a protocol stack because these protocols often operate on top of each other or as you will see in later videos, as you move from protocol to protocol, you're moving down or up a stack of protocols. Now, IP is the protocol that's used for delivery of the messages. Uh, they're called at the IP level packets or an older term that's not used that nearly that much anymore is called datagrams. And it moves these packets from one computer or device to another uh, over different networks until it finally gets to its destination. Think of your IP addresses as your home addresses or business addresses. Uh, there are both public and private IP addresses. Uh, the public IP addresses are globally unique, so there would not be two devices in the world with the same public IP address. Uh, the router that you might use to connect to the internet from your home has a public IP address and it is unique in the world. Now, how are they used? <clears throat> well, if you think of IP addresses as uh, being able to deliver messages similar to regular mail, what would you do when you're sending mail? Well, you get a, a, an envelope um, you write your message, put it in the envelope, and you want to send it to Aunt Trudy. Well, to do that, what do you do? You look up her address in your address book. You write that on the envelope. You stick it in the mail. Well, then the mailman picks it up. It goes to a mailbox or a, a post office. <clears throat> it will be processed, and they'll say, oh, send it to this next post post office and it may go through several post offices before it finally gets to the destination at that point it would be delivered <clears throat> well IP addresses uh, are similar so you want to go to your favorite website so you type in the name of the website in your web browser uh, your web browser contacts your computer or communicates with the TCP IP protocol which uses a protocol called DNS to look up the address of the destination. Uh, think of that as your address book. It then puts that address on the in the IP packet, puts it out on the network, sends it to a router. That router is like a post office. The router looks at that message, says, oh, I need to send it to the next router. And it will go through several routers till it finally gets to a router that knows how to get it to uh, the final destination. And then it's delivered to that final destination. Now, on the envelope, you might have an address like, in this case, my example, 
4041 South 2nd Avenue, Hollywood, California. The IP address would be a number, and the example I've given is 64.125.25.80. Now we'll, in future videos, be talking a lot more about these IP addresses, how they work, why they're represented in this manner that I've given you. Okay. And next time we're actually going to start looking at IP addresses.